Hello Code Mavens and Pearl Mavens, welcome back again to my channel. My name is Gabor Sabo and um, in this video we are going to learn a little bit about Pearl TK. So I had a previous video uh, showing you some about TK and then I had this idea of uh, building a, a GUI uh, using to, a GUI for the Pearl Tidy program. Um, using the, the Pearl TK. Actually, not to, not so much uh, for the Pearl Tidy, but uh, more for the idea of configuration, configuring it. Um, because Pearl Tidy is better to use it on, on the command line, but when you're configuring it, you're playing around with the various configurations. I would like to get immediate feedback and immediate visual feedback. So that's the, the idea. Anyhow, uh, let's go over here the, a couple of slides that I created and a couple of examples that I have. So in this uh, page, uh, on this page, this is, uh, the URL is code-maven.com slash slides slash pearl slash TK. And that's where uh, I started to put together various slides, uh, various examples using Pearl TK. And uh, it's going to gr grow, but let's uh, go the, the couple of, uh, the, go over the, the examples. And, and in case you didn't get the, the URL, don't worry, I'll put it under the uh, video in YouTube and every place where I... Uh, I um, published this video, I'm going to put the URL just uh, included so you can be able to find the examples. So, uh, going through the, the, the slides, the first thing is just uh, a couple of uh, words about Perl TK and the link to the documentation of it. And then this is the first, the really first example, which is just a really plain uh, Perl uh, vi uh, TK widgets. Now widgets, uh, so in um, in, if you're, you're familiar with GUI applications, you know they, are, they have buttons and drop-down menus and places to put uh, in stuff and, and other kinds of pieces on the, on the UI. In uh, the Linux world or Unix Linux world, these things are called widgets. In the Microsoft Windows world, they are usually called controls, but it's the same, same idea. So each one of them is a, is a widget and we are going to see a couple of, of these uh, widgets. But the first one is just a plain window without any widgets. So let's switch to the terminal. And this is the same directory where I have already have the examples. So here I just run the plane and it doesn't, you don't see much. It's just a square something, a gray, uh, nothing in there because well, that's just a plain uh, window. Uh, let's see the, the, the source code for it. So this is what it's on the slide and this is the source code. By the way, if you click on the name of the files here, you actually get to the GitHub page, uh, the source code of all the slides and all the examples. So you don't even have to copy paste from the, from the slides, you can get to the source code itself. So what we have here is just, uh, just standard uh, use strict use warnings of Perl. And then we load the TK module, which you obviously have to install before you start using it. And, um, and then, which is just zip and M uh, TK, I would probably should put something like this uh, at the first uh, page. Then using the main window method, so I don't really like it, but TK automatically imports uh, these uh, these words and I'm not, not even sure if I can explicitly tell it to import this and that. Um, main window is the, is the object that uh, using that we're creating the well, main window, so we call the new method and uh, we assign it to some variable, which I just call top, which is the top window. And then we can start the main loop, which is just going to wait for all the events uh, that you do, uh, that you create using your mouse, using your keyboard. Uh, I have no idea how else uh, to interact with them. I mean, you can have timers, all kinds of other things in TK. And, and that's it, no, nothing more. And then a little bit more interesting is the first widget, uh, a widget called label, which is just the plain text. So it's not really fancy. Uh, let's ru run this first. So it's uh, it's a red, okay. So I tried to record this video earlier, uh, it failed. And then I decided to put red here. So well, now I just enlarge the window and not the button. So the button has a, a red background and uh, not button, sorry, label. And you can't do this since anything. So a label is used when you have, let's say an entry box and you would like to put some text in front of it so people know what to enter there. And these are the labels. So just short, plain texts. Um, how do you create this? Once we have the, the top window, we create a label uh, object. So, so using the dollar top, using the, the, the window object that represents the top window, you, you call the label method, which is a capital L. 
and provide some uh, attributes to it. The result is assigned to this dollar label variable or whatever name you, you, you pick. Uh, label is probably a good, good name. The, the variables, the parameters, a little bit strange, look, look a little bit strange, at least through the eyes of uh, per programmers, but in general, because these are coming from the ideas of Tickle, uh, which is the, also known as TCLTK. Uh, that's a language uh, that gave us TK, basically, this GUI framework, and uh, which is a very command line oriented language. So everything it looks like a, a command line option, and therefore uh, the options here are also look like that. And uh, in this wrapper of Perl, because t this library is just a wrapper around that uh, tickle, uh, they didn't change it to look more Perlish. So that's why it's dash text. And then, but in the end, it's just a key value pair. So just like a hash. So the text is what's going to be on the label and the font is uh, the font type and uh, the font size that you can pick. And if you didn't don't give this, then it will have some default, which is even smaller than what we have here. So you can play with it. And then once we have this label object, it's not enough because it's just created the object. It didn't put it on the window yet. And that's where we need to do is this pack method. The TK library has a various ways of arranging the, the widgets on, on the window uh, and layout managers, they call them. Probably the simplest one is just using calling pack and it will put you put the widget on, I think on the left mode, so always on the left or top or whatever. So pack can get basically four directions where to put at the top, at the bottom or to the right or the left of the, of the window. And uh, this is just using the default. So that's it about the label. And we're going to talk about uh, these uh, layout managers later, but for now, just playing around is, is good enough. And the next one is a button. So the button already has some actions, connect, action connected to it. I run this uh, script and uh, what you can see here is, I, okay, I have to drag it here. Um, this is a button. How do I know? I can click on it, but it also says click me. And then as you could see here, appeared clicked. So every time I click on the console, it prints something. Um, normally, I mean, probably if you write a, a windowing application to NVSDK, you won't print anything on the console, on the terminal. You're not expecting people to look at it. But uh, for this small example, I didn't want to create another widget uh, to show you uh, that it happened something and how to happen, so how it happens. So for now, I'm just printing on the console. So how does this look like? How does the source of this uh, application looks like? Uh, so let's get to this point first. And we have the main window and then we create with the button method, again, capital B, uh, we create um, the, bat the button object, the, the widget, and it has uh, the text and the font and it has all kind of other uh, attributes actually, but for now these are the two that uh, we are the same here and the same on, in, um, whatever, sorry, in the, um, in the label version, and I think I've, I showed you something uh, incorrect in the label versions. So I'm going to back, back, it, back to it in a second. Um, and in then, then you uh, put an additional parameter, which is called command, that the value of it must be um, a reference. I mean, it, can, it could be a couple of things, but for now, just put here a reference to a subroutine. So whenever the user presses that button, this subroutine will be called. And just to be clear, we have this subroutine defined here somewhere, and then we put the ampersand and the slash, a backslash uh, in front of it. And that means a reference to, it's like a pointer if you're coming from other languages, but basically that's a reference to the subroutine. And so it, we won't code the subroutine here, we just pass on this uh, subroutine. So when the user clicks on it, um, then uh, TK will arrange for us to call this function, which does, doesn't do much here, just prints to the console, to the terminal. And then we have to also pack this uh, here. Now, two things here, or a couple of things. One of them is that, yeah, I went back to the slide, uh, to the label slide and reload the page because apparently I, I was showing you a cached version of the page. And here is what was uh, missing the background red. So. You might have been wondering why was it red? So it's because the actual source code already had this, but uh, the slide was still showing uh, an earlier version of the slide. So that's the background flag. And uh, the other thing is that below each example here, I put a link here, TK label, 
and then under TK button there is the TK button and I can click on it and hopefully the link is going to work correctly. This shows me the web page, the documentation of this uh, widget and here you can see what are the parameters that it can get. So there are all kind of parameters that a button can get but the general ones, so these uh, uh, the text and the background color and so on, they are all under the TK options. So I, I cl click here, uh, as you can, uh, I think it's on all, uh, every page. And here you can see, so I think background, if I search for it, um, here you can see that there, there is this flag and then you can read about it and you can see all kind of other uh, attributes that you can use to change the look of, uh, of each widget. So that's about the buttons. And then the last one I would like to show you in this video is an entry box. So again, let's uh, switch to the con terminal and run the program entry. So what we have here is an entry box which has some text, a place to write some text. So I can type in hello world and then a button that I can click. So now it has two widgets basically, an entry box and the button. And when I click the button, it printed out hello world and just again, just the word clicked uh, so you will know that something happened especially if you don't type anything here and then it will just, without the click you would not see anything so uh, that's why i added it uh, for now just for the demo so what do we have here um, we have the main window we add one widget which is uh, an entry fixed uh, the type of the font and the size is 40 so there's going to be larger fonts you could see that it's, uh, uh, the letters were much bigger for the entry box than for the button. And then I pack that. So I, I add, this is added to the, to the window. Then I create the button and here too, the do on click, whatever. It doesn't matter the name of the function. Uh, but this time the function I was defined after the whole thing. And the reason I needed uh, to be it after because in the function I used the dollar entry, which is... Um, an object that was created here. So I, I couldn't de really define the function before that. So that's why I moved it uh, behind. Actually, I think in real code, I would probably put everything into everything into functions. So the creation of these as well. And uh, eventually I would put them in a, in a class so we can pass around uh, objects uh, easily. <clears throat> anyway, so this is what we have. Uh, now I packed the other one. So I packed both of them. Let me run it again just to so you can see it. So you can see that the entry box is at the top and then below is the is the button. So that's how the pack uh, works. And the function itself is the last thing that we have to see is that we have the entry object and call the get method of it. And that get method will actually take out the content what I've actually typed in the entry box. And then here in, in this case, I'm just printing it out. Actually, I think you can also put uh, some value there. So let me scroll down here. Here are the links. So links is there. links are there. Okay. And then I think maybe there's a put method. I, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, set maybe. Whatever. Someone, um, I, I should read the documentation if I wanted to show something to you. Um, let's get to that. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. Uh, I hope that the, this can be already useful. Uh, definitely start playing with it. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about TK, the best thing is to just start start playing. It doesn't matter what. Uh, you can create an example that uh, uh, you can type in as some text and uh, combine the three widgets that you have. Okay, so first of all, the label, the, the text. Now you can uh, try to figure out how when you click on the button, it will take the text from the entry box and put it on the label, let's say, so you can change the content of the label or um, uh, calculate something that's, uh, that you type in, in, in the text box. So all kind of ideas that you can already play around with it just to have some experience. And uh, let me know what you tried and let me know what you encountered, what problems you encountered. So I might help uh, solve them then. I definitely would be interested to, to see your, your work. And let me just lastly, uh, but most importantly, thank all the people who are supporting me via Patreon. And if you are not yet, then that's the right time to go and visit the Patreon website and my Patreon page, Patreon, sorry, uh, for the English speakers. 
and um, support me there because uh, that's what gets me all these videos uh, created. So thank you very much and uh, don't forget to follow the YouTube channel if you're not following it yet. So see you in one of the upcoming videos.